In this video, we will review how to find all the key components of a quadratic function, as well as graph the quadratic function. We are given y equals negative x squared minus six x minus five. Let's begin by determining the values of a, b, and c with the equation in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is the coefficient of x squared, which is negative one. B is the coefficient of x, which is negative six. And C is the constant, which is negative five. Number one, determine whether the parabola opens up or down. The sign of A determines whether the parabola opens up or down. If A is positive, the parabola opens up. If A is negative, the parabola opens down. A is negative one, and therefore the parabola opens down. Next, we're asked to determine the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b divided by two a, and then to find the y-coordinate or function value, we substitute the x value of negative b divided by two a back into the equation or function. So let's first find the x-coordinate, which again is negative b divided by two a. We substitute negative six for b and negative one for a, which gives us negative or the opposite of negative six divided by two times negative one, which simplifies the positive six divided by negative two, which is negative three. We now know the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative three. To find the corresponding y value, we now substitute negative three for x into the equation, which gives us y equals the opposite of the square of negative three minus six times negative three minus five. Simplifying the square of negative three is positive nine, but then we have this negative sign here, which gives us negative nine. Negative six times negative three is positive 18, giving us plus 18, and then we have minus five. Negative nine plus 18 minus five is positive four. The vertex is the point negative three comma four. Next, we're asked to determine the vertical intercept or y-intercept Every point on the vertical axis has an x-coordinate of zero, which is why we set x equal to zero to find the vertical or y-intercept. So if we set x equal to zero, we have y equals the opposite of zero squared minus six times zero minus five. Simplifying, we have y equals zero minus zero minus five. Y is equal to negative five. The y-intercept is a point on the graph, which we must give as an ordered pair. The ordered pair for the y-intercept is zero comma negative five. Next, we're asked to determine the horizontal intercepts or x-intercepts. Every point on the horizontal axis has a function value or a y-value of zero. In order to find the x-intercepts, we set y equal to zero and solve for x. So if we set y equal to zero, we have the equation zero equals negative x squared minus six x minus five. To solve by factoring, we prefer to have the x squared term be positive. So we can either multiply both sides of the equation by negative one, or factor a negative or negative one from the right side. Let's factor a negative one from the right. If we factor out our negative one, it will change the sign of each term, giving us in the parentheses x squared plus six x plus five. And now we'll factor the trinomial into two binomials. The factors of x squared are x and x. The factors of positive five that add to positive six are positive five and positive one, giving us a factor of x plus five and a factor of x plus one. This product is equal to zero when x is equal to negative five or when x is equal to negative one. Because we have two solutions here, we have two x-intercepts. Again, these are points which must be given as ordered pairs. One horizontal or x-intercept is negative five comma zero, and the other is negative one comma zero. Number five, state the equation of the axis of symmetry. The equation is x equals negative b divided by two a. We already know from the vertex negative b divided by two a is equal to negative three and therefore the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals negative three. And it must be an equation which is x equals negative three. And now we're asked to graph the parabola. Let's first plot the vertex which is negative three comma four which is here. Label this v for vertex. 
Let's also sketch the axis of symmetry, which is the vertical line passing through the vertex. Next, let's plot the vertical or y-intercept, which is zero comma negative five, just this point here. Notice how this point is three units to the right of the axis of symmetry, which means there must be a corresponding point three units to the left of the axis of symmetry, which should be here. And now let's plot the horizontal or x-intercepts, which are negative five comma zero and negative one comma zero. Notice both of these points are two units from the axis of symmetry. And now we can make a nice sketch of the parabola. Number seven, state the domain. The domain is a set of all possible inputs or x values. For any quadratic function, the input or x can be any real number, and therefore the domain is all reals. Or looking at the graph, because the graph moves left and right forever without any holes or breaks, the domain is all reals which using interval notation is the open interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is a set of all possible outputs or y values. So looking at the graph, notice how the largest y value is positive four, and then from here the graph goes down approaching negative infinity, and therefore y is always less than or equal to positive four, or using interval notation, we have the interval from negative infinity to positive four, because we include positive four, we have a bracket to the right, and because we have negative infinity to the left, we have a parenthesis on the left. I hope you found this helpful.